Hi everybody, welcome back for another episode. Um, I decided I'd make another vessel and I've just been stitching quite a bit off, off camera while I sort out some other things. And I have utilised uh, Kate's idea, Kate in the Nest, um, with the blanket underneath. But I just was thinking about how Ariane Zercher had made her vessel and um, thought I'd have another go. I mean, because I, I remember when I made my vessels um, last volume for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, how much I'd been wanting to make one for a long time, but not. So kind of really enjoying giving myself <laughs> permission to to do things out of out of order <laughs> to just and just enjoy what I'm doing so I'll just get a bit of this on and show you how I've been doing it I'm really really enjoying it let me put that there for now I've been also using just this one colour. This is a variegated thread and it goes from greens and yellows and this sort of a peachy, apricot-y, pinky colour. It's a kind of a, I don't know what colour it is. Um, but I've been blanket stitching with this around the top so it's keeping some continuity. And so it's a circular base. You can't see because I've covered it up now. Um, I might, if anyone's interested, I might do a tutorial. But there's a circular base and I've started patching over. But I'm doing it so that it folds. So you could carry it with your things in. But when you're working from it and you've got your things in there, it folds over like that. And so I've been looking at how to make sure the edge kind of sits and there's still some interest underneath like so and the variegated thread where is it on the other piece there's another piece somewhere i've used it make a liar out of me where is it here it is um, I've used a bit of old edging of a beautiful old tablecloth and I've run my variegated thread through all the way along and then to make it really stand out I've um, come back and woven through each stitch so it's, it's a lot thicker. So I'll just show you on this one how I've been doing that. Sorry I'm probably bobbling that around a bit. So it can be a combination of stitches for these bits of old napkins that I just love. So I'd go all the way to the end in between every single little hole, making sure I gather the back there. So I hope everyone is well and doing well. We had a beautiful day yesterday. Uh, the winds died down, not not so bad, but uh, we do definitely get a lot of very uh, big spring winds in Melbourne. I think other places in Australia are also getting big spring winds. Um, today it's just sort of started up again. It's been very, uh, very enjoyable process. Now these are old doilies, so that's looking a bit raggle, raggle taggle there. And then I would just go through each of the, the stitches. I think actually I'm going to do it on this outer one. It's a bit more clear that that seems to have gone 
a little bit too under this stitched edge here. But I'll just show you an example. So then when I'm coming back along the row, I'll go through each of these stitches. And that way you get two variegations. And you can see it's already starting to line up and be a little bit more enhanced. So that's what I've been working on and loving. That's very enjoyable. I'll put that aside. The other thing, um, I thought I'd have a little go at the um, Pauline Franklin crocheted uh, basket. So I made a little one to start with, just to have a practice, see how it goes. And it's got, I decided to do two little side handles. And I've been just keeping my extra bits in here. <laughs> They're pretty cute. Uh, it's it's actually so cute. I love it. <laughs> Look at it. It's just, it's adorable. It's tiny. Uh, so um, I wanted to show something else because um, I'm making a bigger one. And I've used up all my pink, which I was a bit sad about. But I found... This has been a sheet that came from a friend and I've had, had cut it up into squares, almost like uh, fat quarters almost, um, and all beautifully ironed, folded up, ready to be maybe put into some stitch packs and then I saw it and went, well, I've run out. I've got this purple... Um, I loved from a, a something else, a dress that I really love, but doesn't work anymore or fit me or something. And I've used that purple. This, I don't, I don't think this matches, but it's in there because it's a memory. This was a dress I wore for a certain amount of time through a certain amount of particular years. And so whenever I see that, I'm going to remember what was happening in my life at that time. So I love that. Um, so I've just been going around and what I'm noticing is how if you miss, say, as you're going, so you've done your base and as you're coming up the side, um, I've done maybe every second row a two, two, like two, two, two into one. So two into one double crochet on the side. Um, and I think I missed one here because it's really smooth on this side, but on this side it's sort of stopped and now it's coming back out. So now I'm trying to attempt to somehow even it up. So this is the other side. So I can see that it's a little bit wonky there, but I, you know, that's the nature of the first one you've made so that's the inside and I'm not quite sure I mean when I open it like this I think it's pretty deep because when I just look at it like this I think oh it's not deep enough but I think I'll still do a few more rows but something I wanted to show that no one else has been showing so far is that you can just, there's so many different ways. Uh, some people in quilting will get their edges and stitch them along here if they're joining. Um, I tore my sheet, so I left this at the end. So when you get to the end, um, let's see if there's one close here, when you get to the end like this, uh, I'm so I'm left handed, so. This is the left-handed version. So it just you can just sort of twist it a little bit if you want. Or you can just leave those little nice raggy taggy edges if you like. I like them. And you just keep going. So I found a lot of my crochet hooks and I'm using, uh, so my, this is the thickness of mine and I believe everyone's going to have their, you know, everyone's going to have their own style with this. 
I'm using a number 10 crochet hook. This is a number seven, but I found my other crochet hooks as well. And that 10 is the biggest one I've got. So what's this one? Six, seven, and a two sixes. Don't need two sixes and a 4.5. So I thought I'd use the biggest one because I thought it would grow faster, but uh, I don't know if that was the case. So another way, I'm just looking for my scissors. One second. Here they are, got them. Uh, another way, this is, I learnt this with Ilka White when I did her weaving uh, rug making class. Uh, where where she joins them like this so you put them together fold them over cut a little snip make sure that you haven't cut it right to the end and then what you do is put your edges together so that there's a little hole and then you feed this through the back so when you pull it through and pull it tight it's joined so I'm going to do that one again, just so, just for showing in case anyone wants to do that. That way you can just keep on stitching along and you don't have to weave. I guess it's a time saver that you don't have to weave anything back in after. Not that it's hard to weave things back in. So you've got your two ends. I don't, I honestly think if it's, Unless it's very white on this side, it probably doesn't matter which way you're cutting them and pulling them together. Just so long as when you fold it over and cut your little snip, you're not cutting right to the very end. So you've got two holes like that. So you put whichever one. So if you've got this one on the top, you're going to feed the end back up through from underneath and then that joins them. So obviously it pulls it tighter. It, it's just a personal choice and I've been trying that on this particular bag just so I can see how it goes you know how does it look this is you know every time you make your very first one of anything i always think it's your sample bag you know it's your sample it's your experimental one it's the one you learn make your mistakes on and learn you know how to improve what you're doing and you know it's really fun so here's one here's my knot so it's a bit different so you can just keep going you don't have lots of loose ends and of course you can just cut this at any time um, the only other thing is this was small but if you are ripping a sheet it's gonna you're going to have one great big long strip and so you're not going to have any of this or any loose ends except for when you change your colour. But you can do this when you change your colour. So that's my bags, which has been great fun. Now I <laughs> remember these, I found this. I've got a big, big box which includes the girl's uh, grandma on on my ex's side, uh, all her old knitting needles, and I found the counter. Do you remember them? Aren't they cute? <laughs> it's so cute. And I found these, so please comment what they're for, because I've never used them when I've been knitting or crocheting, and I really actually don't know. Are they stitch holders? I don't know. I've never, never used them, never seen them. Let me know in the comments what what they're for and what they're about. So I was thinking um, as I am, I'm enjoying, I've always enjoyed crocheting. I, I used to knit 
just the bit that I think I enjoyed crocheting more. Um, but I was thinking about my little crochet needles and I found this bit of old, I don't know where this is from, uh, because I've had this since I started YouTube, I think. So this has been like something that's been sitting there for ages. So I, what I've done is found a bit of thick canvas as well. And I've cut like a little, a little top. So that'll flip over. A little pocket. Got to iron it a bit, get it all lined up. And I'm going to leave all the scrappy edges because I kind of like them. And piece this all together. So it'll be joined at the sides, but this will be able to hold my little crochet hooks. Uh, I'm yet to decide whether I'm going to um, put little lines through to hold them. I don't know yet. This is as far as I've got with this little project. And that's the back. I just love it. <laughs> I love that material. Uh, yes, yeah, so that will come down over here. And I found uh, a, someone gave me a top that I might like to wear or, uh, um, but it was way too small. And so it had these little charms on the end. So I think what I might be doing is joining this in here. And then when I, when I roll it up or fold it or whatever, or roll it this way with the hooks inside, this is going to come around. That'll be tucked in and it'll come around and I'll be able to put that in there and that'll be my little crochet pouch. So there's only one other thing in this update and as I've been enjoying my journaling I, um, I know now that it's getting into spring um, I'll be starting to have some ladies round do some classes here uh, I've got about three little pots with different journal prompts plus my journals from Meg's Junk Journal July and January with prompts in but I also decided that because I love this sort of stuff that I would get the art journal prompt deck from Get Messy Art and I just thought I'd share it because it's quite a bit of fun so it's got a little book uh, the book's kind of cute. It's got little how to use this deck, but you know, I mean, and all the artists sort of been part of the deck. I, I think that it's probably like any deck of cards. You can choose your own way. So I thought I would pick, pick a card from every thing. And if you so feel like doing something, to do with the cards that are chosen so you've got color <laughs> then here's here's a little prompt for you for today if you want to have a look at it all right so there's a lot there's mark color marks technique this is what i'm going to do with uh classes Technique, I just need these. Color, marks, technique, medium. Um, it's such a great idea for cards, and I love the way that it's a community and that everyone's uh, part of it. Because everyone's, you know, their, their name is here and They've got their little bit of art there. Isn't that wonderful? Artist. Okay, so there's quite a lot. There's not as much of the journaling and there's quite a lot of the artists, but it's like that's fabulous for uh, looking up that artist, seeing how they do things, having a go at it. 
So I'm going to pick one from each pile and feel free to just, uh, I'll put them in the link below and just feel free if you want to, to have a play for the day. Um, on the other side, it does have the prompt on the front until you have picked the same card many times, you probably won't preempt what the prompt is. So let's pick one card. This one. And the first card is Meg's. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Good on you, Meg. <laughs> And the second card marks Carolyn S. Nairing. So if you want to have a play today, I love this stuff. <laughs> oh, this is fun. All right, let's have this one. Technique by Michelle S. Michelle S. <laughs> and I will be doing this today, so if I can put down my crochet. <laughs> That's the thing. All right, the medium. This was a risky one because what if you haven't got to that? And I've got another one by Carolyn. I'll pick this and there's another one by Michelle S. So um, let me have a look on the back. Okay, so yes, each artist has given a prompt that might relate to their own personal style of art. All right, so Amanda Fruit, Fruit, uh, it's, I think it's an F, sorry, Amanda. Hang on, I don't want to get your name wrong, so I'm going to have a look. Amanda Throat, T-H-R-O. So that's supposed to be a T-H. It's been cut off. All right, so for colour, use your body as a colour palette. Oh, yeah, enjoy that one. <laughs> okay, you interpret that however you want to interpret that. If I had nothing in my studio, how I might interpret it, if it was a warm day, is to lay out a very big canvas and roll in the paint. But it's not that warm here, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe look at what colour you're wearing. I love it. It's so open to so many interpretations. Okay, one letter repeated. So they've done lots of E's. So you've got blocks, Capital, small, print, cursive, all different types of ways we can mark make. Uh, so when you see the E's all together, they, it looks like a pattern of mark making and, it, and then none of them are the same. They're all done by the same person, but every single one is done a bit differently. Technique. Okay, <laughs> channel Jackson Pollock. Wow, I think I'm meant to get out the canvas on the floor. You can look him up anyway. It's P-O-L-L-O-C-K. Channel Jackson Pollock and splatter paint across your page with reckless abandon. Well, I think we'd all love to do that. <laughs> so this, this is already kind of meaning I have to clear a big space <laughs> for this. <laughs> All right, markers. So your medium is markers. So markers can be all sorts of things. There's everything from fine tip to big fat textures to poskas. Like I see poskas as markers. They're, they're paint pens, they're acrylic paint pens, but I see them as markers. Um, and a question to think about and to answer while you're doing your journal. What's the best thing anyone has said to you? And let's see what Amanda. Okay, so Amanda said, use both of your hands at the same time. So there is a um, book called Drawing 
from the opposite side of your brain. So I think it's it's it, it, the, the heading is left side brain. But when I was studying kinesiology, some people actually, so this is the theory, the very logical people are a lot stronger in the right side of the brain, I think. I think it's the right. And the very creative people are a lot stronger in the left side of the brain. And the idea of doing your drawings together at the same time is that you're creating a balance in your left and right brain and that they're meshing together and you know they'll be both different but when I was studying um, the LEAP program in kinesiology um, uh, Bernard Krebs who wrote the whole Dr Bernard Krebs who wrote the whole book um, found that some people are not like their brains are the opposite way so they they might have their left side is their logic side so it was a bit like you can say left side and right side but really if everyone's different what we need to be doing is just saying okay who has the creative side stronger who has the logic side stronger how do we get those two to marry up and become um, you know more integrated with each other which is a lot of the study I was doing a few years ago before I kind of dropped out and stopped doing all that. Maybe I should get back to that. But anyway, the whole idea is, is that you're, if you're using your non-dominant hand, you're creating other patterns in your brain and it's all to do with the neurodiversity, you know, your neuro neurodiversity, that's the wrong word. It's all to do with um, the pattern, you know, neuro patterning. So if someone gets Alzheimer's, but they were a violin player when they were younger, they can generally still do the violin because they have learnt it so much that it's just so ingrained in the brain patterning. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I didn't expect to go off on this tangent, but anyway, this is something that I have been passionate about in the past and should probably be getting back to for my own benefit as well as the connectedness with other human beings when you delve into this stuff. So if you feel like it, <laughs> splattering paint and using your body as a colour palette, <laughs> oh, I just had an idea of what I can do. Um, I'm going to give myself... Um, an at-home art retreat so I don't know if anyone's heard about it but occasionally artists will say I'm giving myself an art retreat and it's where you give yourself permission to take whatever time you need a week a month 10 years <laughs> um, to be unapologetically an artist without interruption and to allow yourself to move down deeper into your soul with the with the work. So I'm going to give myself permission today to have a little bit of an art retreat and not feel guilty at all about doing that. So there, I hope you enjoyed this episode, which kind of didn't at all go where I thought it was going to go. It just happened. It was the way it was, and I'm very happy about that. And I'll write these down in the description below and see what you think. Thanks for being here. I've enjoyed your company and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.